I want to go home. I want to see my family. I'll never do it again. It wasn't even me. The juvenile justice system is hurting my community. It's hurting trouble. They talk a good game. But there is no meaningful education going on inside the juvenile justice system. There is no actual discussions about why they, what they did was wrong, how it affected them, and how it affects their community. If there is an education, it is an education for survival within the madness. It becomes more of a test than anything. Um, you've, you get to test how tough they are because now you're in a facility with maybe the roughest and toughest youth from all across the city. One cannot exactly appreciate and ponder about the universe, gain skills and plan for tomorrow when you're worried about whether your throat is going to be cut. So gaining more knowledge on uh, criminal activities. Um, it becomes more of a skill share. It is an education as about violence. It is it an education about aggression? It is it an education about devaluing human life? And if you can succeed in here, well, if you can make it through here and out of here without getting, I guess, punked, you could say, then you, you can come back to, the, you can go back to your community and now you're more respected because you made it through that experience. That is the education that one gets simply by trying to survive inside the juvenile justice system, especially when they're locked up like animals. I think that's why kids just keep coming back because it's, you know, it can be different when you're there and you're in court or you're locked up, but if it's the same when you go home, nothing's changed, then you know, it's the same patterns are going to be there, the same behaviors are going to be there, and it's going to be hard for kids to stay out of trouble if nothing's changed at home. Department of Corrections, you know what I mean? It's called correction. You know what I mean? You, you sit somebody in the cell and in the hole or uh, uh, something for, for years, let them rot, and then just bring them out. That's not correct in anything. If, if anything, that's adding to, the, adding to the problem. I think um, the original goals was to establish this parental court, to look at the child's background, to understand what led to the crime that the kid committed. Um, there was also this um, intention to also to keep the families together. The whole difference between the adult system and the juvenile system is that the juvenile system is supposed to be more geared towards rehabilitation. It's not supposed to be punitive or not supposed to be based on punishment. A century ago, kids were really not treated as children, um, they were treated as adults. And what that meant is that if a kid committed a crime, they were sent to prison. And we know today that there's a lot of issues with that when kids are sent to adult prisons. 17 and under, they might be considered a juvenile. So if they're 17 and it's a misdemeanor, which means a lower level offense, then they're a juvenile. Um, if they're 16 and under for a, a felony offense, they're considered a juvenile. Um, so at 17 you could be either a juvenile or adult in the court system. So any bright line rules about juveniles being tried as an adult I find really problematic because they're not adults and there's a lot of scientific research out there differentiating just the mental capacities of, of teenagers versus adults. They aren't able to appreciate um, consequences or right and wrong or you know things like that at the same level that adults are. So there's a lack of, of understanding of consequences, which is just partially because that's how juveniles' minds, they haven't formed that type of um, consequence-oriented type of thinking. I think if you were to ask 17-year-old African-American males in Chicago if they've ever been stopped by the police, most kids are going to say, yeah, even if they weren't doing anything wrong, even if they weren't arrested. So education is closely connected to the juvenile justice piece because 
young people are getting locked up in school at an exponential rate. Every day, more and more juveniles and youth are going to jail. So when kids get into trouble, kids get into fights, they go straight to the police room. They, 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 they go and get arrested. Um, and they end up in the detention center. We call that the school to prison pipeline because kids are going straight from school to jail. The, the, the lower class get, get forgot about. We, we get the worst education, we get the, the worst teachers, we get the worst jobs, and, and, and they, they expect us to make a miracle out of nothing. You can't ignore the fact that the vast majority of kids that are down at the juvenile court and that are locked up in the juvenile detention center are young African-American males. Um, that are coming from, you know, lower income households. And I think it's, I think it sort of affects it on both sides of things because I think that being a young African American male in Chicago makes you more likely to get stopped by the police, whether or not you're doing anything wrong. I think though we are at a critical point right now where the system is at a brinking point where we have a lot of kids who are on the inside and a lot of marginalized groups are overrepresented in the system right now. And so we need to kind of break through that cycle and try and imagine a new system or abolish it and come up with something new to really help our, the future, to help kids. There definitely needs to remain and be even more of a focus on you know, rehabilitation and not just on punishment um, because so many kids just get caught up and keep coming back and keep coming back. A child needs to have a future outlook. A child needs to uh, be protected. I wish that there was better education in schools in terms of saying, hey, this is what this actually means and these are the consequences that are coming. I think I would want there to be more involvement in terms of finding out from youth what would really work and what would help and what would prevent them from getting involved in the first place or from getting involved again if they do get involved. There are youth working all over the nation on juvenile justice issues, closing down detention centers just like we're trying to do here in Chicago. Um, fighting to make reform, trying to change laws that criminalize youth for being youth. Um, so there are a lot of ways youth can get involved. People in communities knew their rights and were more educated, you know, and um, knew what a cop could and couldn't do. I mean, I feel like that would eliminate a good part of the problem. I think if we don't fight for ourselves, no one will. And if we don't support the, the organizations and whatnot that's, that's trying to make a change, trying to make a difference, then, well, we don't have a right to say anything about when things don't change. So much attention is being put on the negative and what you aren't doing or the bad that we are doing, but not enough attention is being put on all of the positive things that young people are doing. Because young people are doing this work everywhere. Mm -hmm.